Welcome to Societal Deconstruction Podcast, or SDP. This is our juxtaposition of man and AI episode. My guest tonight is going to be my friend Matt. How you doing, Matt? Uh, I'm doing as best as I can, considering my existence. Yeah, I'd say we're all kind of on that level. And just to know, it's... 3.59 exactly. in the morning. <laughs> exactly. This is when we do our best work, Matt. It, does, it is. It really is. And I do apologize. My voice is a little scratchy. I was sick all week and I had a really bad cough. And I think I almost died of pneumonia, but I'm okay now. I think you had walking pneumonia. I think I did because yeah. there was a day where I couldn't catch a breath. Like my lungs were full of fluid. And but yet you didn't walk anywhere. No, I didn't walk anywhere. I stayed why, in my bed. Why is it called walking pneumonia? Because you're not... You're not laying down, like, half dead, like the regular pneumonia. I guess. I guess you could function with it, and sometimes you don't know you have it. I was just going to say, I've never had pneumonia. Oh, I've had it, like, four or five times. So, I'm susceptible 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 to it. So, I I may very well have had it. Well, one day I took, um, I was feeling really, really crummy, and I took three ibuprofen, three tramadol, a big hit off my inhaler, and, um... A big giant mucinex, and I slept for twenty four hours. And when I woke up, I did feel certainly felt quite a bit better. You should just drink a whole bottle of Delsum. Oh, yeah. I didn't take any cough medicine today. I'm just saying. Huh? You could have robo tripped your way out of it. Oh, that would have yeah. been interesting. I used to always like that codeine cough medicine the do- doctor would prescribe me. And it's the same thing. That's what they put in that scissor. Scissor. <laughs> Scissor. What do you call it? Lean? I don't know about lean. Are you kidding me, dude? No. Holy shit. If I, I know about lean and you don't know about lean. Oh. No, I don't know what the fuck Have you ever about. listened to Lil Wayne songs? For, yeah, but like... You were sipping on some scissor. Yeah, that's not Lil Wayne, but that's a different... I was just going to say, that's fucking like, what, 3-6? That's not Lil Wayne. I don't know who the fuck it is, but... Sipping on some scissor. Yeah, I don't listen to that shit. What the fuck do you think they're talking about? Fucking getting crunk on fucking alcohol. Ha 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 shit the fucking, you know, uh, chalice cups and shit. This is a great little you know? unintended conversation that we're having here. Because I think this is like, I, I, funny I, as fuck. I ended up boycotting fucking rap and R&B and hip-hop and all that shit after like 2006, 2007 for a while. Just because like, it was all regurgitated the same bullshit. Yeah. To her. Okay, so just... <laughs> In case y'all didn't know, because I actually didn't know the me- the meaning of it. I've always said this word. I never even I, heard of it. He never, he's it. never even heard of it, but until I've always said, said the word juxtaposition, but honestly, I mean, I think I put it right in the right you context. Did. You did. I kind of knew what it was, but I didn't really know the meaning. So right. the definition of juxtaposition is an act or instance of placing two elements close together or side by side. Yeah. It's done to compare or contrast the two to show similarities and differences. Two examples that we have are black and white and yin and yang. Just so everybody knows what we're talking about. And um, I'm also going to define AI, artificial intelligence. It's a topic that is um, in in the news a lot lately. A lot of people are talking about it. They're starting to come out with a lot of actual stuff. We're going to start really seeing it and hearing about it. And so what it is is a set of technologies that enable computers to perform a variety of advanced functions including the ability to see, understand, and translate spoken and written language, analyze data, make recommendations, and more. So one of the reasons people get a little worried about AI um, from the past is the, the Terminator movie. The movie Terminator, that was, yeah. He was, the Terminator was an AI character? He was a cyborg. Oh. Is that right. the same as AI? No. Oh. So why do they think it's AI? Because Skynet in the movie was the AI oh. that created the Terminators and wiped out humanity. Do you know I never really watched those movies? Do I know you? I remember being in the background of shit while I was doing stuff, but I, it wasn't like my thing. It's, I can't believe you just said that. It's like that. sci-fi. It was, I don't know, it's not my thing. It's not really sci-fi, though. Oh. It's not really. Because if you think about it, we'll fucking do that to ourselves eventually. We don't need a fucking machine to nuke the entire world. I can't wait. It'll be fun. We just need World War Three to happen. Another thing I'm looking at is a program called Grammarly, which is a writing AI app that hopefully I can use um, and write my book in two weeks. Right? I mean, 
Meaning it'll be done in two weeks, or, like, it'll take two weeks? I was thinking it would be done in two weeks. Or faster. Which was kind of, um... Because if it's a true AI, it'll keep learning from itself, and... It'll just write itself. And then then write it even faster. And I'll just proofread it, and edit it, and we'll be done. Now, if you do that, are you plagiarizing yourself? I don't know. I feel like it's cheating, like, hardcore. Technically... I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble. Right? Yeah. Do you have to, like, cite yourself? At that point? Probably. Let me see here. I wanted to read you all something that I found today on Reddit. Who likes Reddit? Mm. No yawning. It's 4 a.m. This is when we do our best work. It is. That's usually my best work (laughs) is doing the mulch. Mm. Okay, so this is from Reddit. It's from a subreddit group called Awakened, and the poster is Zen Master. And I just thought this was super interesting. And it starts with a quote. The only unique contribution that we will ever make in this world will be born of our creativity. I'm not very creative doesn't work. There's no such thing as creative people and non-creative people. There are only people who use their creativity and people who don't. Unused creativity doesn't just disappear. It lives within us until it's expressed, neglected to death, or suffocated by resentment and fear. The only unique contribution that we will ever make in this world will be born of our creativity. If we want to make meaning, we need to make art. Cook, write, draw, doodle, paint, scrapbook, take pictures, collage, knit, rebuild an engine, sculpt, dance, decorate, act, sing, It doesn't matter. As long as we're creating, Mm -hmm. we're cultivating meaning. That's an excerpt from The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. So, I like... In this... Oh, go ahead. I like that post, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like it a lot. Well, and the rest of it I want to read, too. This is a commentary from Zen Master from Reddit. Commentary and questions. As human beings on the path of spirituality and awakening, which I feel I am, these illuminating words directly guide the way towards something deeper and more profound. We intuitively understand that to truly come alive in the world as spiritual beings, we must turn away in part from blind materialism and hollow mass consumerism, amen, and that we must also avoid being just another unknown cog in the machine to be immediately replaced when it finally wears out, amen as well. The only unique contribution that we will ever make in this world will be born of our creativity. This one line has such powerful resonance and impact, and it is entirely and inarguably true. There are currently 8 billion people on the planet, and the majority will live, die, and disappear without a meaningful trace to many and without ever making a unique contribution that will be remembered. It is also important to note here that the more someone only has a concern with self in this world, the less resonance they tend to have with others, and the more easily they will be forgotten when they are gone. That is karma. We must bear in mind that as human beings, we are entirely social creatures and that we require real human connections in order to truly make ourselves whole. This is why the internet has failed us in many ways. Even though we have vast and extensive social networks, are they really bringing society together or are they really allowing us to turn to the darker impulse of turning our backs on society and keeping it at a distance as we indulge in the illusory electronic world of fantasies and delusions? And now we are on the way of the very bleeding edge of a sweeping new change that will affect every single aspect of human effort and ingenuity, which is the advent of artificial intelligence. It is a foregone conclusion that every single job across the world, whether creative or service oriented, writing or manufacturing, will eventually be done by artificially intelligent computers, robots, and androids. We won't even get a chance to be that unknown cog in the machine as we become obsolete in ways we perhaps haven't even considered. There will, of course, be the absolute necessity for a universal basic income at that point in order to keep all economies going. And that will happen once it is apparent that humans are no longer needed for any form of work. But that in turn will become the greatest turning point in the history of humanity. Now, my question for you all is this. At that time... Will the loss of all possible employment and creative work for humans lead to a renaissance of the human mind and become a time of great and unbound creativity and spirituality for us all? 
or will we lose our drive and spirit and fade away into history due to our impending obsolescence? Are you talking to me? That's the end of the post. Oh. That was a post by Zen Master. Um, hope you don't mind. I read your post from Reddit and the Awakened subgroup. I just thought that was super interesting. Wondering if the end of employment and creative work for humans will lead to a renaissance of the human mind. Right. And become a great and unbound time of creativity because so, without everybody having to work, which we've all been on a so the, on a hamster wheel and rat race for a couple hundred years. Right. We we've been we've been feeding a system and spinning and uh, running in a uh hamster wheel in Circle a sense. Jerk. Um to where you know the hamster wheel is attached to say it generates power somebody's getting that but it's definitely not us Mm-mm. you know um we are literally uh we're working ourselves to death uh one of my favorite uh quotes from a band that i like is parkway drive they're a heavy metal band uh is uh uh let me see here oh shit <laughs> see this is why four o'clock in the morning is like, know, the know, best time ever i know uh, when everything has ended, what have we accomplished? Oh. Slaves by design. And what that essentially is saying is that we are born into a construct to where we are only able to go so far in our class of things. Once in a while, we can jump classes and jump, you know, in, uh, in, in jump the mold in a sense to where we can then, you know, create a new for... Uh, a, a new uh, path for us. But typically speaking, people that are born in certain uh, demographics, people that are born in certain countries, people that are born um, in certain eras and fucking decades are known to only have certain choices and certain opportunities presented to them that they can choose from, and it's limited. Now, I read one other quote. I don't know where I saw this today. But I thought it was great. And it also is a lyric from a song by, um, oh, Jeans, not Jeans Addiction, Porno for Pyros, which was um, the offshoot of Jeans Addiction. I don't like Jeans Addiction in the first place. Who so. was the lead singer of Jeans Addiction? That guy, um, what was his name? What? I don't remember. The lead singer of Jeans Addiction started another band called Porno for Pyros, and they had a song called We Make Great Pets. We do. And that was just my little yeah. where I saw I saw that somewhere today too. I think it was on Reddit. Reddit's good. I like it. Essentially, the uh, uh, powers that be that control the economy of the entire world. No, don't get it twisted. Literally, a handful of people control the economy of the entire fucking world. That's just so wrong. Like, not just this country, not just a country, like the fucking world. The fucking world. The world. The world. Um, mm-hmm. just it's it's crazy, weird. Anyways. Um, that's another thing that's, like, a dying thing is that, like, uh, cheaper end grocery stores, cheaper end retail stores, cheaper end everything is all dying out and getting bought out. I'm surprised Save-A-Lot's still in business. I know. I love Save-A-Lot. I've been there a few times, but for the same price, I'd rather go to fucking Aldi's. The only reason I'd rather go to Save-A-Lot is it's two blocks from my house. Well, yeah. I Aldi's is, like, fucking four miles. Yeah, but at least Aldi's is one of the biggest competitors for freaking organic foods. Yeah. Did you know that? I don't care anymore. They almost put Whole Foods out of business. But I think I've polluted myself so much with bad food that what's the point of eating organic now? Uh, For your health now? Oh. Duh. I've already had cancer and everything. So? You can get cancer again. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So? So to get back on topic, though, um, with AI uh, and the new frontier coming up, AI has been around for a while. Right. All right. AI, AI has been around um, since, uh, I would probably say... Um, probably the 80s. Nah, I, I would say it's probably the 80s for military-wise, uh, but not for, uh, you know, regular general population. Because you got to think that the internet started because of the intranet that the military had. Ah. Right. I the, think The that... military had... Um, and the government had the uh, internet uh, way before the internet uh, was even... Why they call it intranet? Because it was only uh, able to be accessed from within 
them. That's why it was a close. Oh, not like a World Wide Web, right, like the exactly. internet. Exactly. Sounds like it should be opposite. Yeah. Doesn't it? Kind of. Don't get me started. Okay, we're we're smarter than the rest of the people. But the, the point world, is, right? is that so <laughs> if, if they already had that before they released the internet, World Wide Web, um, to the general public, chances are they've been using AI for certain things for quite a while. I'd probably say more on the NASA side of things before NASA got decommissioned. Um, actually, my professor used to work at NASA. I can't believe they decommissioned NASA. But like, holy shit. Well, NASA was freaking overspending budget all the time. What do you expect? Oh. Yeah, like on purpose. Well, NASA was cool, man. It was cool. Did you ever go to the um, NASA, I did. the Space Center? I did. And I've been there. I've seen two shuttle launches there. I've... Which is cool. Not a lot of people could say they saw seen two shuttle launches from right. the from Jetty Park. You, you know what I miss? Yes, yeah, Jetty Park. You know what I miss? The sonic booms. Yeah. From when it re-entered the atmosphere. Yeah. Oh my that god. Was neat. That was neat. Like you always no matter what you were doing, you hear it, boom, boom. And you really only get to do that if, if you were in Florida or Texas. Right. And like you knew Oh, pff, they just landed. All right, cool. Like, they didn't get blown up this time. Like it didn't right. It didn't they matter what landed. you were doing. As soon as you heard that, you know, two, you know, booms back to back you knew that there was the shuttle coming back and stuff like that it was a distinct yeah break of the sound barrier yeah and cool. uh people don't hear that anymore <coughs> you cannot you don't hear that with rockets coming back or anything nope. like that mm-hmm. nope because the rockets they float back down to the platforms uh. that i mean granted the ai that is controlling that that uh elon designed to save money to recycle the rockets. Right, so every time they launched a rocket, it wasn't gone forever. Right. I remember hearing about that. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, that it, was dumb. Like, it comes back down to Earth. Right, they can reuse and, it. And the, and the AI and the uh, computer guidance you know, tracking system lets it land on the platform and everything like that in the middle of the ocean. Like, it's freaking amazing. Hmm. Yeah. And they would just reuse the parts or reuse the rocket? Yes, or... they reuse it. That's why uh, the government has, you know, they contract they contract with Elon to send supplies up and stuff like that to space is because he does everything that NASA was able to do for pennies on the dollar, essentially. You know, um, NASA was spending upwards of probably tens of millions per How launch. No. Per launch, where... Elon's, you know, spending a million or less per rocket. How does he know? Does he? He doesn't do this. Like he has, he hires a scientist and stuff. That oh, he hired he freaking NASA. Stuff, right? He hired. I was NASA gonna say scientists. all the people that that left yeah. NASA, right? Yeah. He hired NASA. Scientists. SpaceX. Yeah. It's the company. Yeah. Is there any? There's other companies. I don't watch the news, so I apologize for I don't, not knowing I, any I don't, of this. I, shit. I don't. I don't. I haven't watched the news in like uh, three, four years. I haven't in like two years. Uh. It's just bullshit, but it's Lisa, that's a whole, stuff. yeah, that's a whole other podcast. Yeah. Um, is there other companies besides SpaceX that are doing the same thing? Does it matter? Yeah. No, it doesn't. I'm curious. I'm just saying, does it matter? I don't know. Like, to me, I'm curious. I, I want. Uh, I'm asking so the question. We we live in a world that's based off from what? Free market. Mm-hmm. Right. Right to compete. You know. Um, capitalism at its best. You know. Uh. There's not a whole lot of people competing to race off into space. What about Virgin? Richard, uh... Right. He, so, uh, the... What's ri- his name? Richard? I don't freaking know. Uh, I just call him the guy that went over Niagara Falls in a barrel. Uh, Richard Branson? S- software version of it. What? Richard Branson? Is that what? him? The Virgin guy? I don't freaking know. Let's find no, out. Show me a picture. I'll freaking... I know faces... He's got the blonde names. hair. I know faces way better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's him. It's Richard Branson... Ty Loathing Adventure, philanthropist and troublemaker. Told you it was philanthropist. Who believes in turning ideas into reality. Astronaut 001, otherwise known as Dr. Yes at Virgin. I know what a philanthropist is. I told you that too. I said they're more involved in charities than investing. They're not. Business investors are investors. Philanthropists are more involved in charitable causes. No. Yes. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. We're going to Google that too. We got to Google all day long. We'll Google that. Actually, you know what? I hate Googling stuff. You know why? You don't retain the information. I do. Um, I don't. A philanthropist is somebody who, who gathers other people. They get other people to donate. They get, you know, they'll have a, they'll have a, um, a foundation that 
that that you know stirs up money for causes and whatnot. Well, I get that because uh, you know I've, I've worked for some nonprofits where like I actually had to hit you know other organizations up for charitable you know causes. Did you know Tito's actually donates? They don't donate uh, money per se, but they do donate alcohol. You told me that. To events. Philanthropist. A person who seeks to promote the welfare of others, especially by the generous donation of money to good causes. Right. And an invention that could benefit humanity is a good cause. Right. But they're not investing in stuff, per se. They're investing in a charity. What do you think about a workless society? Okay. So that's what I was getting at. Um, So it's not that it would be a workless society. Is it worthless or workless? <laughs> well, it would, no, it's not that it would be worthless because there would still be people that would be working. Some jobs. You know, that they would want to, though. Like the people that work like road construction. No, no, no. AI's no, no. not going to do road construction, Bullshit. are they? Bullshit. For real? Ha- have you not seen the fucking 3D printed houses? Jesus Christ, no, I have not. <laughs> They're freaking amazing. I don't watch TV, dude. Have you ever, have you heard about the 4D um, tubing? Nope. Uh, where it expands... To where, like, you know how they got to put uh, stuff down for uh, sewage pipes and stuff like that? Yeah. You know, so essentially, they just dig the trench, and then the 4D stuff, uh, it expands to be a, a certain length to where they don't have to put, bring in and haul in pipe after pipe after pipe after pipe and connect it. Like, it can make a fucking pipeline. Yes. Like, from Alaska to goddamn fucking end of South America. But the point is, is that, it, uh, imagine, um, okay, you ever, you know the firework? Uh, the stupid firework that nobody likes to freaking use called the snake. Yeah. You, you know, where it's just like a little it's fucking <laughs> a piece of carbon that just keeps growing and yeah, growing Yeah, I and liked growing that when I was a kid. I thought it All was right, cool. All right, imagine that, but it's a uh, tubing that we need for uh, sewage lines and things like that to where you just put one piece in one spot and then it grows to be as long as you need it to be. You no, know, I don't watch the news and maybe it's bad that maybe I should figure out some kind of news source to watch so we can talk about current events and stuff on the podcast so far i haven't really needed it but i know that i will eventually so i will find a source of news that's non-biased and not fake and not a bunch of bullshit like you know abc cbs and nbc you know what what i actually like to watch bbc yeah i used to watch that bbc over in in britain Uh uh-huh um just because um they cover all kinds of stuff and they govern themselves to make sure that they don't govern like one particular thing, they the American to, government's not in charge of them. Right, they're not in charge. Exactly, the American government's not in charge of them. And on top of that, though, they try to stay unbiased. So, what do you think if we end up getting taken, not taken over by AI, but once AI takes over everybody's job, the, the, and then uh, nobody see, don't say that, don't say that because they can't take away everybody's job. So, what jobs would stay? Um. Cleaning the bathrooms at Walmart? Nope. Uh, the stuff that would stay would be... Would AI more... clean the bathrooms at Walmart? What? Who would clean the bathrooms at Walmart? The freaking robots. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, there wouldn't be any fucking Walmart. Fuck Walmart. I fucking hate Walmart. No, you, don't, fucking you, you get what I'm saying? There wouldn't be a Walmart. There oh. wouldn't be all these freaking giant um, companies, conglomerates and shit. Because in order for a true AI to happen to where people only work if they want to work, not because they have to work, the monetary system is going to have to go bye-bye, which means... They're saying we'll get a stipend from the government. What I'm saying is that like, everybody will have access... That sounds great. Everybody will have access to the same stuff. If you want you know, a certain bicycle for your kids, I have this access to the same bicycle. If you want us to kind of toilet paper, a particular type of toilet paper. Right. Everybody has access to it. You like, can get it. Will they have so many different kinds of things, or will they pare it down to where there's maybe just just a couple different brands of things? Just a couple. See, now you're still getting it twisted. You're saying different brands. No, not different brands. It would be different types. Oh. As far as, like, how it's made or how it's, you know, what it's made out of. There wouldn't be brands? Why would there be brands if there's freaking no more competition for, you know, making a bunch of money between conglomerate companies? Why would there be brands? right, right. You know, it would just, everybody would have equal access to everything. I think people that need to dress in brands are need so, to go to the, the psych, psychiatric hospital. So the jobs hospital. that wouldn't disappear would be uh, engineering. Um, Why? 
Why couldn't AI do it? Engineering? Yeah. They can build bridges. Stop licking. Okay. I'm not saying as far as designing, but as far as implementing, as far as double checking, because, okay, you think that, how much, on a daily, yeah, I'll go with daily, on a daily average, how much human error do you think happens across this country? A lot. Okay. 25%. Do you not think there's going to be computer error? Do you think there's five five no, percent maybe? But there's still going to be, which means there's still going to have to be people to double check machines work. And why would the people be right? They should have a machine double check a machine. Because machines are only built and capacity by the construct of what the man originally programs. Now, till they take over. Well, no, that's if they allow that. All right, you. If you, who allows you, you it? Can, the people that build the AIs. All right, you can build in safeguards to where it's not allowed to access certain, you know, uh, ports, uh, not able to access certain, you know, servers, not able to access certain, you know, whatever. Can you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. And uh, can you check uh, on when the first AI got shut down uh, from Google? And Facebook. I will when we come back from our break. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, perfect. Yeah, during the break. Okay, yeah. sounds good. All right, we'll be right back, kids. All right, we're back with Bo and Matt. Societal deconstruction podcast. <laughs> Sorry, my dog is destroying my garbage can, I think. No yeah. worries. No worries. I don't even know where she was. She was down here. Yeah, I know. Ah, crazy Coco. I know. Crazy Coco with congestive heart failure. Yep. She's 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 coming along. Um. All right. So, the AIs for Google got shut down how many times? Once. And then uh, also Facebook had AI that also got shut down. How many times did they get shut down? Twice. All right. Do you know why? I do not. Um. So the government stepped in. And the reason the government stepped in and shut them down is because the AIs that they used to. T- control the algorithms, searches, things like that for everything and anything and categorize stuff and put things together, started to develop um, its own language to where it also then created its own sub AIs to do their own tasks. And it started communicating to these other AIs that it created in this made up language that it also created for shorthand that we couldn't understand. And the government got scared and told them to shut it down. Three different instances, same thing happened each Hmm. time. What does that tell you? That they don't have control of it yet. Uh, To a certain degree. um, What I would say that that says is that AI, if left uh, uncontained... Unchecked. Right, unchecked, will no matter what, develop a way to be more efficient, Mm. to make things uh, more organized, and also... Uh, it will make itself as, uh, you know how we always do updates on our phones, software, everything like that? Mm. It'll continuously update itself to where it'll always make sure that it's in peak performance all the time. How much um, red light, you know, uh, accidents would you think there are in the in the fucking world that happen on a daily basis to where... A green light and a red light are timed just barely to where when they switch, it's not exact. And somebody goes on green when the red light hasn't even hit red yet. How many, like that slight little fucking fraction of a second, how often do you think that might happen in the world to where an accident happens at an intersection? Oh, 100? Because of a timing of a fucking, all right, an AI, if there, if there was an AI that can control worldwide that, that would never happen. Right. Because they would make sure that they were as efficient as possible to where their timing was never off when switching between the green and the red lights. Right. On the opposing sides. All right. But we can't get to that uh, range of optimization without going into the realm of undiscovered territory in a sense where we let it free roam. We let it give it free reign and see what it does. The government's too scared. Why is the government too scared? Because, well, too many governments have too many secrets and too many governments have nuclear weapons. Mm. 
they don't want to accidentally cause a, you know, doomsday. Right, right. The, you know, Terminator situation. But at the same time, we shouldn't be fucking having missiles anyway. All right. Fuck Who are we going to shoot them at? Each other. Yeah, I mean, why? It's stupid. Exactly. We're all going to die from Mother Earth anyway. Yeah, we ought to just all... But that's the thing. You can't guarantee that everybody will do it. Like that Kim right. Jong-un, I, he's an untrustworthy motherfucker. Right. I would not believe him. If he said he got rid of all his weapons, I would certainly think he would have some stashed. Most likely. And, and Putin, too, probably. Putin? He fucking... Man, Putin's... I'm, I'm not going to lie. I give Putin props. Like, he's an old school gangster. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to... Sh- he's like, you tell me what to do, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, like, right. What? Yeah. Like, he's an old school gangster. Um, to where I, I, I'm not attacking Ukraine. I, I'm not doing that. <sighs> Ukraine gone next day. He's sitting like, there watching, the and he's sitting there eating popcorn. Right? Oh my god. Um, but yeah, no, he's like, uh, screw you guys in the sanctions. I don't give a shit. Um, but that's that's the thing though. Is it like, who in the world is the biggest bully? That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Everybody in the world would say America. Yeah. Everybody. And we have been for a long time. Maybe Fuck we're not it. now. Maybe Russia is right now. Right, but what what's the most important thing? Being the biggest bully and controlling the economy and everything like that? Or uh, education, like Finland? Or um, health, like some of the other fucking countries, uh, like uh, over in uh, Europe? And even uh, Cuba has a fucking vaccine for lung cancer. What? Yeah. Did you know that? No, I've always wanted to go to Cuba, though. Yeah, they have a vaccine for lung cancer. To where, if you've never had it before, you get a fucking vaccine for it. Well, I'm going to go to Cuba and get that, I think. Yeah. You know who developed a fucking cure for Ebola? Canada. Ebola, one of the most deadliest viruses ever known on this earth. Mm -hmm. That kills people within a fucking day or two. Canada made a fucking cure for it. Oh, shit. They had us give us some. But, so, we wouldn't know these things because we keep trying to keep things away from each other. Instead of sharing. So drop the missiles, bring the AI, and let's freaking just all create the greatest world that we can. Definitely. I'm on board with that. You know? So there was one guy uh, that actually had a vision like this back in the 60s. His name was Jacques Fresco. Mm. And uh, he ended up getting a lot of shit for his idea back then. And which is weird because back then you would think a lot of people would be more apt to go against the government, to go against um, the system at the time because of flower power and Woodstock times and everything like that. They were all, I you mean, know, they were pretty much the all the hippies Black were Panthers, anti-government. Yeah, Black Panthers, like everything was going on back then. So you'd think that more people would have paid attention to Jacques Fresco's idea of having a unified world where machines took over everything as far as the mundane jobs that no one wanted to do allowing people to have the free time to do what they wanted to do, spend time with the family, travel the world, um, become a scientist, become a teacher, uh, become whatever they wanted to be because they no longer do had... Do creative things? Do creative things because they no longer had to be a slave to a system to freaking earn money for something that doesn't even exist anyway because we but made But I can fully money. understand this because I quit my job back in February of last year and... Ever since then, I've been the most creative that I've been in my life since, uh, except for when I was a kid. Mm. And I mean, I've been writing, I'm, I'm blogging, I'm podcasting, I've been painting, um, listening to music. I don't even watch TV anymore. My creativity is just constant. Um, I'm working on a case trying to get a guy out of prison. Right. I mean, it's just never ended. It's boundless energy. And I, That's I'm, what it I'm, is, I'm energy. excited and yeah. I'm never bored. And it's wonderful. Not working is wonderful. It's, uh, it's the best thing. And, you know, all my life I was always a hard worker and I believed in working for your money and not, you know, uh, uh, just having your hand out for it. Um, I always believed in that. But, you know, I, now I think I could change my tune on that completely. Well, could you imagine if you didn't have to worry about the money aspect to where, like, just everybody had, you know, the uh, same two or three houses? Would it be a little bit fucking boring as far as, like, that aspect? Sure. Nobody would have a special house or... A special car. and So what? Nobody's fucking special anyway. Mm-hmm. Nobody's better than the other person. We all are made up of the same atoms. We're all made up of the same freaking molecules. You know, electrons, neutrons, all that shit. We're all made up of the same shit. The universe. Exactly. So 
why should somebody have a better house than me just because of some other shit that happened in their life that didn't happen in mine? Right. It doesn't make any sense. No. But what if the tables were turned and I didn't have to slave myself over uh, freaking loading a truck by hand and shipping and receiving, not using a forklift, literally having to load an entire full-size truck by hand from floor to ceiling just to maximize inches of space? It doesn't make fucking sense. Uh, Sounds horrible. The point is that I'm getting at, though, is that I'm not afraid of working. I don't mind working. But I'd rather have put all that energy that I had when I was younger into doing something more towards that I would have uh, been able to give back to, you know, the world in a sense. To give back to those around me. You know, whether it be something having to do with art, whether it be something having to do with ideas or creativeness or uh, design or whatever. It doesn't matter. The whole point is that those that end up doing the stuff that they enjoy, they share it. They never work a day in their life. Well, they share it with those around them, which can inspire others. And then that energy that you had then goes to somebody else Mm -hmm. to where they have that energy. They have that, you know, vibe going. And then they can give it to somebody else to where that creative spark. Oh, I have so much of it. Just keeps going and going. Like, I wake up and, like, I'm, like, excited to to go do my stuff. I'm excited to get on my computer. I'm excited to write. I'm excited to to record. I'm excited to paint. I'm excited to do anything. I know I'm going to do something, one of those things, or, or my case. I'm excited to go through my case. Um... I'm excited to do at least a couple of those things every single day. I'm excited again. Right. It's like Christmas morning for me. Right. And, shouldn't and I've it, never been this in my life. But shouldn't never it be like, like that in my for life. everybody? It should. It's beautiful. I right. love it. I'm happier than I've ever been in my entire life. The only reason people aren't is because they're stuck. Slaves to the system. Slaves to a system that's Slaves driven, to society. driven to um, a dollar bill and coins uh, that is made up, doesn't even fucking really exist. You know, it's something that we as a world decided to make into existence to organize things. But whatever happened to the barter system? Whatever happened to, hey, like, I'll go ahead and, you know, put these shingles on your roof if you want to go ahead and help me with my fence. Whatever happened to, hey, I'll teach your kid how to ride their bicycle if you teach my kid how to rollerblade. People don't trust each you know other what I'm anymore. Right, we don't even know our neighbors. No, we don't know each other. Right, didn't you do a podcast like about that? Episode two. You know what I'm saying? Like... I remember growing up, I I knew every kid in my neighborhood. My parents knew who their parents were. Um, I knew the ghosts in the cemetery that I used you know, to play in. Like, everybody knew who everybody was. Mm-hmm. You know, at, at the same time, I also got to say devil's advocate here, you know, because I'm sure there's people that might listen. Uh, well, that's also how some of the, you know, kids got kidnapped and disappeared. Like, mm-hmm. you know, Benny Ramsey, you know, do you remember that mm-hmm. back down here? Um and then what was that one that we were like the one towards Point Siena near uh, Green Meadows Farm, Intersection City area that happened like, uh, what, 25 years ago? Mm-hmm. Shelby uh, Cox? Was it? was it Shelby Cox? Who was that? Anyways, the dude that freaking took her um, ended up joining the search party for like two weeks. And it, was, it happened to be like the neighbor, like across the street that took her. So, like, stuff like that happened back, that, you know, when everybody knew each other? Yes. But shit like that fucking happens now anyways. It's just now you have a harder time tracking and finding your kids and finding your loved ones because now they're just getting abducted, you know? So, uh, I don't know. I'd rather at least know that my kid is at so-and-so's house that might interact with so-and-so. So at least that I know there's a probable chance that there's this much, you know, danger or, you know, possible, uh, risk going on. Right. Right. But also kids today are very desensitized to the fact that like they see things in the movies, TV shows, things like that to where they don't care to really, they'll laugh at somebody saying that they're going to try to abduct them, but they don't know how it freaking happens and really goes down. So if AI fucking does all these mundane jobs that we don't want to do, that allows us to spend more time with our family too. You know, For real, yeah. That allows us to uh, not miss those fucking moments that we wish we, you know, didn't miss. Or, hey, did you get that on camera? Oh, my God, I can't believe you didn't get that. Like, 
we don't have to miss those times. Right. We can enjoy every little moment because that's the thing. Every moment is precious from moment to moment. That's all life is, is a series of moments. Mm-hmm. Every single second that goes by. And you got to spend your time enjoying the moment that you're in instead of worrying about the past and the future. Correct. Well, to a certain degree. I mean, if something bad happens, obviously give it its due. You know, give it its time. You know, do what you need to to uh, go through the emotion that it deserves. But don't re you know, drudge it back up. Don't keep having it come back around. You know, give it its time. Then get it out of your head. Because then you have new moments every single day. Every single hour, every single minute, you have new moments happen where a new opportunity uh, for anything positive to uh, counter the negative aspect that just may have happened. You know? Mm-hmm. So, always, always try to look at the glass half full. Mm. I try to for the most part. Sometimes ah. I slip. Sometimes I slip. Slip. Ah. Now we're playing shoots and ladders. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> Oh, oh man. man. I freaking hated that game. Yeah, well, I didn't hate it. I did. It was all right. I did, because I always wanted to climb up the, sh- you know, slide. You always got the shoot? Yeah, I always wanted to climb up them. Oh, you yeah, had to get the ladder. I wanted to climb down the ladder. Oh, uh, yeah. Because I was that kid that on the playground, I climbed up the freaking metal slides, because we had metal playgrounds back in the day, um, that were scorching hot. Oh, yeah. Before the sun. But, you know... You climb up them, and then as far as, like, the st- stairs or the ladders and stuff, I just slid down those. Kind of like a fire pole. Huh. I think I did, too. Yeah. I had no fear as a kid. No yeah, fear no whatsoever. fear. No fear at all. No. I had a little, like, bubble protecting me. Yeah, kids say they're pussies. Yeah, for sure. I, I and this would... podcast isn't for pussies. Uh, this this podcast is for people that uh, would... Live life on their own terms. Would, would uh, on their own terms? Mm-hmm. Are, are you sure it's their terms? I think so. I mean, only only people that, that aren't c- continuously thinking about, you know, their jobs and their rents and their mortgages and, you know, all these things that keep them slaves uh, would be uh, really free to... What are you doing? I think I'm sleeping. I think you are sleeping. I'm exhausted. What fucking time is it? Dude, I'm so tired and I'm still I'm still kind of sick. I think I'm I'm literally... He's talking away and I'm sitting here sleeping. I got my second wind. He was like, what are you doing? Was I sleeping? A little bit. It Could you hear like me it. breathing in the podcast, do you think? I don't think so. Oh, God. Sorry, guys. I'm, I fell asleep. I'm tired. I'm going to go sleep again. You finish up, finish up, Matt. Uh, mm-hmm. Well... I love y'all, all my, all my listeners out there. Well, I mean, I guess... Well, I have uh, one more thing to say real quick. Well, I was just going to say, like, with the whole Jacques Fresco thing, I wanted to touch base on that a little bit more, but I guess we could do that later. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. And I just wanted to say, if you like this episode, please leave a rating and review on our website, societaldeconstruction.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You know, I actually want to, like, see somebody say something, and like, that's either... Um, Adding to something that you discuss, or even I wish they would. Nobody post, comments or leaves a review or anything. Like I'm always down for a healthy debate. Always. I still got to set that part up on the website. The website is still a work in progress, guys. I'm trying to get it done, but um, it's it's a lot of editing, so I'm still working on it. But it's it's good to go for the most part. All right, Matt, shut the hell up already. Jeez, Louise. Anyway, thanks guys for sticking with us and listening to Matt ramble. Um. And if you guys fell asleep too, I can't say I blame you. I uh, hope you all have a great night. This is Societal Deconstruction Podcast, episode 12. And we'll see you next time for episode 13. Well, I guess it's safe to say Matt put me straight to sleep on that one. Holy moly. Uh, love you, Matt. But boy, can you go on and on and on. Anyway, everybody, I'm sorry that I got the podcast out late. I was sick and my daughter was in the hospital. So it was just a little bit hectic. And um, thankfully, we are all fine. So everything's good. And uh, here you go. And the one thing that I wanted to 
highlight on this podcast was that quote that I did earlier about creativity. And then I also wanted to discuss whether there would be a creative renaissance after we become a workless, workless, not worthless, workless society. If everybody would get creative and start, you know, painting and writing and cooking and building and just doing all kinds of things. Because I think, boy, if that happens, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. And I hope I'm here to see it. But the other side of it is, are people just going to lay in their beds, lay on their couches, watch TV, and just be lazier and lazier and lazier? I feel like people would even get bed sores. Um, I just think that would be an awful, awful thing to see. So what do you guys think? Do you think we'd have a creative renaissance? Or do you think we'd have a bunch of people sitting around with bed sores? Let me know, guys. Have a great one. Thank mm -hmm. you.